This is a good news day. You know, Proverbs says that a good report makes the bones fat. Now, I don't want fat bones, I don't think, but I certainly want anointing in my life. And good news, the good news you're going to receive today will so encourage you. It will put you over. You will see maybe some new things you've never seen of what you have in Christ. Because today I'm going to be ministering on breaking the generation curse. So many people live under the curses of physical things, mental, emotional, habit things of their family. And so they have called those things generation curses. So when we look at that, I want to really look at what the scripture says, because I think as Christians, we need to see we're not under the curse. We're under the blessing. And in Exodus 20, verse 5, it says, The iniquities of the fathers are visited upon the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate him. I don't believe you hate him or you wouldn't be watching this program. So this program is very important to you. Now, I want to look at the word iniquity. I want to look at the word sin. And I want to look at the word trespass. Sin basically means to miss the mark. Trespass means to go over the mark. So basically we sin against God that we miss the mark of what he wants for us. We trespass against others because we walk on their territory. We are a trespasser or they trespass on us. And so we have that kind of thing we have to face. But this does not say sin or trespass. It says the iniquities of the fathers. So what is iniquity? How is it different from sin and trespass? Well, iniquity means something you practice over and over until it becomes a habit in your life. So iniquity basically means to bend. You are bent in that direction because you have done certain things for years and years and years. It's a pattern. It's a habit in your life. And you bend in that direction if you get into that kind of a circumstance. So it's not the sins. It's not the trespasses. It's the sins and trespasses that have been practiced to where they are a pattern in the life. And it says those are what are passed on. Now, when we look at this, when you go to a doctor, you know, they always ask you these questions. How long did your father live? How long did your mother live? Uh, did they have a asthma? Did they have heart problems? Because doctors know those physical patterns are passed on from generation to generation. But let's look at this scripture. Inequities, it says, are passed on to the third and fourth generation of those who hate him. I don't believe you hate him, as I said, because you're watching a Christian program. But get the next part of the verse. Those who love him, he will bless them to a thousand generations. So the curse at its worst of those who hate him cannot go beyond four generations. But look at the blessing. Could you look at the blessing? You love him? How many generations? A thousand Wow, and I love that, that he blesses us to a thousand generations. So what is this for you and me? Now, let's look very carefully at this, and I want to look at the physical. I want to look at the mental, emotional. I want to look at the spiritual. Think about this just for a little bit. You say, well, my grandfather died at a certain age, my mother died at a certain age, and I have the same thing. But that doesn't say the iniquities of the fathers are passed on those who love him. It says on those who hate him. Now, if we go into the New Testament, it says that Jesus redeemed us from the curse. So Jesus took all the physical curses, the mental curses, the emotional curses, the iniquities of the family, the patterns that were set up in that family that made them sick, the patterns that were set up in that family that made them weak in certain areas of their lifestyle, 
the patterns in that family that caused them to turn aside from God. Wow, Jesus broke the curse. Now put your hand on your heart because everybody, it seems, emphasizes the curse, but they don't emphasize the blessing. So I say this with me. I believe Jesus redeemed me from the curse. I am not under the curse. I am under the blessing. So I want to talk about this physically because as I said, doctors will always ask you this. So in my family, on my father's side, heart was a big problem. So I understand that my grandfather had heart problems. I understand my great grandfather had heart problems and I have an aunt, you know, uh, at this time who shared with me and at this time she was in her nineties and she said to me, you know, these heart problems are what kill the Schweitzers. That was my maiden name. But she said, you know, I am a Christian. I don't, I've lived this long because I'm under the blessings of God. Now you're listening to me and you're thinking, ooh, there are some physical problems in my family that I've inherited weaknesses. But remember what you have in Jesus. He redeemed you from the curse. He broke the curse. So what you inherited from your father, your grandfather, your mother, you have a new father. And Jesus doesn't have a heart problem. Jesus doesn't have arthritis. You have a new father. You have a heavenly father. And so we have to look in that direction. So I'm going to tell you about a very personal testimony because with my family, you know, it was always the heart thing. When I was 11 years old, they told me I had a heart problem. And so I began to take certain things, health things to help me with that. But then when I was 23, they told me, you have an enlarged heart. You can never be active. <laughs> That's so funny because now I'm 82 and I'm about as active as I can be. In fact, I'm more active in my 80s than I was in my 30s. So what's going on? At 23, my husband and I had just gotten married and we were in a service someplace and we're worshiping God. And all at once I felt this warmth go over my heart. So I said to my husband on the way home, I said, you know what? I said, I have a new heart. He said, really? How do you know that? And I told him how I had experienced the presence of God. And so in my next checkup, the doctor checked me. He said, well, I don't know why they say you have an enlarged heart. You have a wonderful heart. And I love this. When I go for checkups, invariably, they will say to me, man, you have a wonderful heart. Well, I have a new father. I have a heavenly father. And he has spare parts in heaven. I mean, he can give you a new heart. He, can gi he gives you a new nature. So I want to say that to you who are watching today. Call us for prayer for any of these things you feel the enemy is trying to put on you because you don't hate the Heavenly Father. You don't hate Jesus. You don't hate the Holy Spirit. You love him. So you need to say with me again, I am blessed. Are you saying it now? Come on, I mean it. Say, I am blessed to a thousand generations. So I remember one time when Sarah was at ORU and I don't know, she was in basketball or something and they told her maybe she had a heart problem. I said, no, you don't. You don't have a heart problem because you're not a, in the generation weakness. You're in the generation blessing. And of course, now Sarah's in her 40s, no heart problem. They never tell her she has a heart problem because she is blessed. And the blessing goes to a thousand generations. What is this scripture? It's Exodus 20, verse 5, but it's in other places too. Now, let's look at the New Testament. It says, and I love this in Romans 8, that we have not received a spirit of bondage again to fear, but a spirit, listen, of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We don't have a bondage to fear. What am I going to get from all this family weaknesses? 
but I have a father and he's so intimate with me. I don't just have to say heavenly father. I can say daddy. Wow. And he doesn't have a heart condition. He doesn't have asthma. He doesn't have arthritis. Is this wonderful? Is this wonderful? Jesus set us free from the curse, but I'm very concerned that we see that we have a new father now and that we're not under a spirit of bondage to fear what's going to come on me, but we are in the spirit of adoption. He is intimate with us. He wants us to run the race. He wants us to finish the course. He wants us to see that Christ in us is the hope of glory. And again, if you're suffering from some things that you say, wow, you know, these are things that have come down from my family. I want you to call us for prayer. We don't counsel you, but we love to pray. And we're going to pray what the scripture says. He that the son sets free is free indeed. Could we look at the blessing today for you, your family, the generations that are coming? You know, I look at my grandmother and she was a tremendous prayer, a tremendous Christian. I look at my mother, my mother, tremendous prayer, wonderful Christian. And I look at myself, I love to pray. I look at Sarah, she loves to pray. I'm looking at my granddaughter, Isabel. Isabel will pray with you at a drop of a hat. So will the boys. See, we, we don't think of the blessings. We let the devil put a bondage of fear on us and you're not under a bondage of fear. <laughs> you're under a spirit of adoption. My heavenly father, my daddy. And let me tell you, we're going to take a little break, but I want to deal with habits and weaknesses that the enemy tries to put on us. So stay there. I'll be right back. Now is the time to shatter the past and take control of your family's future. God has a great plan and future for you and your family. You can break generational curses and live under generational blessings. Let God heal your family and reverse the bad thinking and harmful conduct passed down through the generations. Live every day in the positive spiritual, physical, and psychological health promise for you. For your gift of $35 or more, we will send you two cherished books and teachings from Marilyn and Sarah. You will receive Breaking Generational Curses and Blessing the Next Generation, both filled with anointed insight and life-changing encouragement. We will also send you the Imparting the Blessing to CD set. Learn about the very powerful, very biblical keys to living in the freedom and blessing that Jesus died to bring us. All for your gift of $35 or more. Call or click today. I just love good news and you do too. We love good news. I have a book that can bring some of the best news you have ever received. It's called Breaking Generational Curses. Actually, people, if you're a born again Christian, the curse is broken. The curse of physical needs, the curse of spiritual, mental, emotional, poverty, lack, failure, Jesus redeemed you from the curse. Now in the book, I tell you how it all starts. How did this generation curse begin? And you will see the pattern of it. What brings the curse? What is sin? What is iniquity? What are trespasses? Because you say, well, I've heard some of it, but I don't really know the root of it. And this book shows you the root. 
and you will just love it. Now also, I have something in here that tells us a whole segment of how the curse comes upon people and their households. You know, you say, well, are there any generation curses in the Bible? Oh, yes. It is the Herods. Oh, my goodness. The Herods are descendants of Esau. And they always hated the Jews. And then they take that hate to the Christians. And it started with a generation curse that followed them through. But if just one could have believed, just one, the curse could have been broken. And so what are family curses? What are family blessings? Because the most important thing you need to see as a Christian today is that you are redeemed from the curse. Jesus took the curse, but there are blessings that are to go on to a thousand generations if Jesus should tarry. What are those blessings? You say, I don't know what they are and I don't have time to teach them all, but you can get the book. All you have to do is call in and we will tell you how to get the book. I think it's one of the most important books you've ever had. And I would say this to you, don't get one book, get at least two. You may say, well, I need five or six. I need them for a Bible study. Yes, you do. Because this is one of the most important issues in every Christian's life. And they live under the lie of the devil that they are in a generation curse. And the Bible says that is not true. The curse is to those that hate him. The Herods hated him, but we love him. And the blessings are to those that love him. Now, let's just see, how can I break that pattern of thinking and wrong believing, because it brings wrong living. How can I break that? And I have a special, just a special chapter on breaking the pattern once and for all. Not going back every day, but breaking it once and for all. And how you can live in the freedom. I'm not under a curse. I am under the blessing. I love him. And then I look at some families who should have been in a sense under the curse, but how they stayed with the word of God and their families were blessed from generation to generation. You say, well, I probably know who those are. I don't think you do. It's the Rechabites. You say, who are they? That sounds like a gourmet food. They're a family in here on page 223 that that generation curse was broken by their obedience to the word of God and the blessings came on them and the blessings stayed on them from generation to generation. And what about the times when you just feel weak? You just think, oh, wow. I just, I'm so weak in this area. It's such a temptation for me to just slip and slide back into it. I tell you how when you are weak, lean on him. He is strong. And how do you get the word to work in your mind and through your mouth into your family? How can you, as one believer, break curses that are maybe physical, mental, emotional in your family? Can you believe, be the believing one who sanctifies the household? Oh, yes, you can. As I said, I've written many books and I like to write books. I think I have over, easy over a hundred books, but this book is in many different languages. And this book, it, I'm telling you, it fits in Hindu culture. It fits in Buddhist culture. It fits in Islam because it really tells what Jesus can do. And people are very afraid of curses. That's why, you know, they have those special days when they worship their ancestors because then they think that curse won't come on them. <laughs> and so the lie of the devil goes throughout the whole world to all religions, but we're not in a religion. We're in a relationship. And that is very key for you to see that you have a relationship with Jesus that not only affects you, but it affects the future generations those physical things the enemy has tried to put on you, 
You don't have to carry and you don't have to have them. You are set free. And I want to share a testimony. I just heard this about two days ago about a man who had been in prison and went to work for some people in our church who have a business. And so he told them, you know, I, I am a Christian. And they said, really? Because he saw a picture of Jesus in the office. They said, really? How did you become a Christian? He said, well, I've been a Christian for about a year. He said, I was in prison. And he said, one day, one of the prisoners was watching a program. And he said, you probably never heard of this name before, but it was Marilyn Hickey. And she asked us to pray and receive Jesus into our hearts. He said, so I and my prison friend prayed that prayer. He said, that totally changed my life. He said, you've probably never heard of her. He said, when I can watch her, I watch her. But he said, you know, I'm not into the drug scene. I'm not into the burglary and the violence. He said, I have Jesus inside. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So my friend who has the business, oh, she said, we go to her church. We see her a lot because she preaches in the church. And, you know, he couldn't get over that, that they knew. But you see, one prayer can bring total transformation into your life. One prayer. You say, is that in the book? That's in the book. And another thing I like at the very beginning of the book, you can kind of take a test and see if generation curses are working in your family and you're not aware of them. Like for example, and this is on page two, it says, take the test. Is there a pattern of consistent failure in your family? That's a generation curse. If you say, yeah, all my family have been failures, I am too. No, 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 no. Jesus redeemed you from that. Is there a history of untimely deaths and suicides in your family? Wow. Is there a pattern of high level anger in your family? That could be a generation weakness. Is there a history of abuse such as physical, emotional, or sexual? That goes from generation to generation. But remember, Jesus sets the captive free. I'm just having you check it out. What could be those things that are at work? And you will know how to check them off, and you will know what to take in place of the curse, the word, the promise that brings the blessing. You're watching this program. Have you called in for your book yet? Or I should say to you, have you called in for your books? Because to give this as a gift is very important. We give people flowers. They wilt. We give people candy. We make them fat. But if we give them God's word, and really, I see unsaved people love this book. I see backsliders love this book. I see Christians get turned on to what the Word of God can do in their lives. It's printed in other languages and other countries because it is the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Call right now. Don't put it off now, because tomorrow you might forget. So call right now. Get your books. Let God give you a truth in your heart that not only sets you free from the lie of the devil, but it also can be passed on to set others free. He that the Son sets free is free indeed. Now is the time to shatter the past and take control of your family's future. God has a great plan and future for you and your family. You can break generational curses and live under generational blessings. Let God heal your family and reverse the bad thinking and harmful conduct passed down through the generations. Live every day in the positive spiritual, physical, and psychological health promise for you. For your gift of $35 or more, we will send you two cherished books and teachings from Marilyn and Sarah. You will receive Breaking Generational Curses and Blessing the Next Generation both filled with anointed insight and life-changing encouragement. We will also send you the Imparting the Blessing 2 CD set. 
learn about the very powerful, very biblical keys to living in the freedom and blessing that Jesus died to bring us. All for your gift of $35 or more. Call or click today. Children and family are such an important part to our hearts. And all of us who have children, all of us with our parents, we know that family is a very, very essential ingredient in our lives. And you know, I think about in Psalms, it says, one generation will declare the glories of God to the next generation. And I believe that many of you watching today, you probably have kids or you think about your parents and maybe they're not serving God. Maybe they're not interested in God. Maybe they seem to be rebelling against God or they just don't give a rip. They think, you know, well, if God really cares about me, you know, something will happen. They're just ambivalent. And I want to encourage you today that God is working in their hearts and no prayer that you pray for your children or for your parents goes unheard, that God hears our prayers. And, and more than hearing our prayers, God is very much engaged in working and dealing in their hearts. So please get on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for your family, that your kids would come to know Christ and be committed to Christ, that your parents would be absolutely in love with Jesus more than anything else. And mom, it's such a, a, a cool thing generationally. You know, your mom was a strong believer, you're a strong believer, I'm a strong believer. On my kids, you know, it's just continuing to con the generation blessing, if you will. That's and true. we want that for our viewers. And I want to tell you, there are more than what Sarah's saying. My grandmother, wonderful Christian, and my cousin has her Bible. Oh, the places she cried in it, the places she underlined. And that came down. Now I see my grandchildren loving the Bible, wanting to speak what God says. That's a generation blessing that God has promised to us. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Now call in or get on the website and have us pray for your family that you and your family are going to serve God with all their hearts. Not half-hearted, wholehearted. Do it now. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We are so thrilled that we get to minister to you on YouTube. So, of course, you got to hit the subscribe button because we want to continue to get to connect and at your convenience. That's one of the things I love about YouTube is you can watch at your own convenience. And when you subscribe, then you get all the latest and the greatest.